Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics, a podcast dedicated to exploring how things get places and the people who get them there. We'll talk with logistics and supply chain leaders about innovation, industry trends, and the future of the logistics business. Now, here is your host, Joe Lynch. Hello, this is Joe Lynch. Welcome to my podcast. Today, I've got a great guest. I have an old friend of mine, Eric Moline. I've known Eric for a long time, and I'm always impressed with him. And so when he joined Load Smart not so long ago, I was absolutely thrilled because I would have somebody who could tell me a little bit about that company, which is doing some uh, pretty interesting things. So today we're going to talk about using artificial intelligence to improve both the shipper and the carrier experience. And we're talking again with my friend, Eric Moline. Say hello, Eric. Hi, Joe. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate this opportunity to speak with your audience. Excellent. Excellent. And if you guys hear any noise in the background on Eric's end, it's uh, they're doing some construction. So I apologize in advance for that. So let's get started. Eric, tell us a little bit about you, your background. Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? Siblings, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So I'm a very proud graduate of Michigan State University, though I didn't graduate with a degree in supply chain. I, I went to school for, for finance and joined a company called Carrier Direct after I had graduated from Michigan State. I'd started there as, a, as an annualist and, and had worked my way up to being executive vice president when I had left. Carrier Direct was a boutique strategy consulting firm and we focused on serving the transportation logistics space. So we worked with companies such as Border Enterprises and Blue Grace Logistics uh, that's based down in, in Tampa, Florida. And after that, I had, had joined a, another uh, company called AFN, where I, where I was responsible for strategy and change management. And that uh, eventually took me later to Lowe's which I had joined recently earlier this year back in, in April, where I'm, I'm responsible for operations and basically delivering on the promises that we, we make to our customers. Excellent. So... You went to school for finance at Michigan State and just curious what led you uh, to, to logistics rather than go and follow the uh, Wall Street or more of the traditional finance trail? You know, that's, that's an interesting question. What really drove it is I have a deep appreciation for the physical impact that logistics has on not just the economy, but, but on people's lives, you know, and, and basically without trucks, the, the nation would come to a pretty screeching halt. And, you know, the, the other thing that, that came into it is that what, what I really did enjoy about finance is the ability to, to have an impact as well as the sort of mechanics that are behind the decision making and the frameworks there and the, the quantitative aspect of it. And I was able to see those, those same things in, in transportation and logistics. And I also just really enjoyed and, and appreciated how much disruption and transformation the, the marketplace was, was going through when I first took a look at it. And you know, thought that that would be a, a great opportunity to really learn quite a bit about technology, about change, and and about you know one of the the, the nation and the world's largest marketplaces. Excellent, excellent. So, Eric, tell us a little bit about Load Smart. I see a lot in the news lately. I imagine a lot of my listeners have seen a lot about Load Smart. Also, tell us a little bit about Load Smart, and then a little bit about what you're doing at Load Smart. Sure. So LowSmart is a digital freight brokerage. And the way that I kind of think about what that means is that we really are more nerd than freight broker. The reason I bring that up is because we, we lead with technology and we complement that with strategic partnerships and with people. And I say that we lead with technology because we saw an opportunity to have a, a great impact in the market and, and to serve some needs that we, we saw customers weren't currently receiving uh, support from their current providers on. We, we saw an opportunity to serve those needs to, by, you know, through leveraging technology. And what I'm responsible for at LoadSmart is, I mentioned earlier, delivering on the promises that we make to our customers. So... That what that really means, and you know the, the way that that's shaped is basically leveraging the technology and working with our data scientists and our software engineers to to build technology that allows us to deliver on those promises at a pretty unprecedented level. And we, we can get into this a little bit later, but but basically, for example, you know leveraging our data and our technology to to understand service failures before they happen, for example, and and so LoadSmart really is just we're. We are basically, again, trying to, we're leveraging the technology that we've built to come up with a, a solution that we can offer to not just our, our shipper partners, but our carrier partners as well. That adds, adds value in a, a way that the industry hasn't been able to provide previously. 
It's interesting. I, I know this is uh, there's a lot of tech startups and there's a lot of people doing a lot of different ways. From what I could see, Load Smart, and again, a lot of times in the news, obviously doing some things differently. So you mentioned using artificial intelligence. Tell us a little bit of what is artificial intelligence? I mean, I think I know what it is, but give us a little deeper understanding of that. Sure, absolutely. Artificial intelligence, the way that I think about it is it's, it's the practice of using machines to automate decisions that normally would require human intelligence. And as you can tell with, with that sort of definition, it pretty quickly becomes a bit of a moving target. A great example is that something that was once considered artificial intelligence, optical character recognition, is such a common technology now that it really isn't anymore. And so the reason that you know, we leverage artificial intelligence is because there are opportunities for us to automate lots of decisions and automate lots of services that we provide to our, our customers, to our, our shipper customers and to our carrier customers through the, the data that we have access to you know, that we're, we're acquiring from both public and private sources. So that's, that's really how I, I think about it again, is that, you know, use machines to do things that normally require humans. So you mentioned the data. Obviously, data feeds this algorithm for AI. Where do you get all that data? I mean, doesn't it take a lot of data? It does take, it does take quite a bit of data. We get it from, from both public, public sources as well as private. I mentioned earlier that we, we lead with technology. We complement that with strategic partnerships and with people. And, and you know, those strategic partnerships are, are great for, for the data and the visibility that we can gain from you know, the sort of sources that we're absorbing that data from. So you know, it, it comes from a number of different places. And, and we, we invest quite a bit into not only getting that data, but, but also finding more sources of, of data. Because that's really the, that's part of what I would say is the secret sauce for you know, how we are able to provide the services to our clients that we do. So when we talk about AI making a better experience for the customer, the shipper, how does that go? How are you adding more value with AI? That's a great question. So one, one great example is through artificial intelligence, we're able to deliver a significantly greater degree of optionality to our customers. What I mean by that is we have a machine learning algorithm we've built internally that helps us to predict prices. And by helping us to predict prices, and we've, we've been able to get to the point where we feel confident enough in that algorithm's outputs now that we will even guarantee capacity behind the, the prices that we were able to generate. And so through that artificial intelligence and, and through some, some integrations, we can, we can deliver a significantly higher degree of optionality. And ultimately, again, what I mean by that is a rate. We can, we can deliver significantly more rates to our customers simply because rather than having a person do it, which might require 30 seconds to run through a rate and send back an email to a customer, we can do it through algorithms, we can do it through integrations, and that, that generates quite a bit of efficiency and scale for us. And it also means that we can provide significantly more optionality again to our shippers that way. We'll get right back to the podcast in just a moment. If you sell transportation or logistics services, the Logistics of Logistics can help you sell more. Our customized program will help you understand your sales personality, including your strengths and blind spots, get more sales leads, and improve your communication and salesmanship. We can also position you as a recognized industry expert and help you reach your target audience. To learn more, visit thelogisticsoflogistics.com. And now, back to the show. So you're using AI, so you can forecast capacity in all the lanes that your customers are shipping. Earlier on, you mentioned service failures. How can you go about using AI to predict service failures? And then what do you do once you say, hey, look, this looks like it's going to be a service failure? That's, that's another great question. Artificial intelligence in so many ways is, is about understanding patterns and being able to leverage the data that you have to, to make predictions. And I say that it's a prediction because just because we, we have an algorithm that says, hey, a service failure will happen here, there's a, there's a chance that it doesn't and there's a chance that it does. And so by leveraging that output, that intelligence that we're able to generate from those algorithms that we've built, we can understand before a service failure happens and, and even down to the individual event level, whether or not we should expect a service failure. That's pretty empowering because what that does is that puts the people that we have making the tactical level decisions into a much more powerful position, much more into the driver's seat than, than otherwise. And so rather than being reactive all of the time, we can be proactive and we can make decisions ahead of a service failure occurring so that 
rather than experiencing a service failure and needing to be really great at managing exceptions, we can minimize the amount of service failures and exceptions that we really have to experience in total. So you mentioned using AI to judge capacity, or I should say, there's a forecast. We all have forecasts, but what you're doing with your AI is able to add another layer, which is to say, this might be the lanes you struggle with. Here's the lanes we need to work extra hard on. So the way that I think about it is is actually not so much that, that this would be the lane that we struggle with as much as this is a lane where we know capacity is going to be significantly more scarce. And so we need to act sooner or we need to make a different decision as to how we're going to procure capacity for our customers and, and through whichever channels we, we do, whether it's through autonomous booking of that capacity or through relationships that we've developed. Because the sooner that we act, the sooner that we'll be in a, again in a power position where we can really ensure we have the opportunity to to make sure that we're servicing our customers. And really, what what that comes down to is understanding where we can expect capacity to be, as well as leveraging information that we're getting from our our carriers that we've worked really hard to build relationships with. And you know, the way that we think about it is that we serve them. You know, how do we leverage that information to understand where their needs are and to match those up with the shipper's needs as well? Makes sense. Makes sense. So one last question on the shipper experience is using AI, are you replacing headcount or are you still having people on board to help your customers out? That's a really great question. So the short answer to it is that we understand the difference between automation and empowering. The way that I think about it is that logistics is something that requires both art and science. The things that are science are are absolutely prime for automation. The things that are art, on the other hand, are really where the human element is really, really critical and needs to be, if anything, magnified. And that's where we use our data and our technology to empower people and put them into the driver's seat and into a position to make more educated and intelligent decisions. So the way that I think about it isn't so much that we are replacing headcount, and, and maybe I'm, I'm a little sensitive to this just because you know having been a consultant in the past, you know, understand those sorts of conversations. Nearly as much as there are there are places where it, it makes sense for humans to focus because those are things that are difficult to automate, and even in some circumstances like trust and collaboration, you don't want to automate those. There are other things where it makes sense to automate. A really great example is that there are, uh, for example, the Usage of APIs to communicate data across companies has increased dramatically over the last several years in the industry. And previous to that, it would have required someone either calling another company or getting onto a website to see what a status update may have been. And so through that computer, that server-to-server communication, you can automate that task, which means that rather than having someone go and look at a website, which is not a great use of human capital, You instead have them spend their time focusing on what are ultimately the much more challenging and difficult problems to solve, or those that, that again, are are highly abstract and there isn't a simple or clear solution. And that's where that's where we think of the... That's at least how we think of this in, in the approach that we have is, again, understanding the difference and the delineation between automation and empowerment. Got it. Got it. That's awesome. Interesting twist to our business. Now let's talk a little bit about your carrier network and how AI interacts with what you're doing with your carriers? How is it a better experience for them that you have AI? So that's, that's a great question. Really, where I think the answer starts with that is, is really it's rooted in our philosophy of logistics platforms. And what I mean by that is the best logistics platforms are really backed by a strong carrier portfolio. So a healthy carrier is ultimately the backbone of any strong logistics platform. And by leveraging artificial intelligence and the technology that we have, and again, focusing people on where people should be used and, and instead having machines go through a lot of those sort of mundane or, or easily automated tasks, we're able to do a couple of things for our carriers to ensure that, that we help them to stay healthy because we, we think that we have just as much responsibility in that part of our business and that part of their business as, as anyone else would and in that part of the industry as well. So for example, carriers communicate to us some of the the needs that they have or or maybe where they want to go based on where they might have capacity at any one point in time. We work hard to leverage that information to not only find them opportunities in our immediate shipper network, but also work out finding opportunities that, that we don't yet have or that we know exist but don't necessarily own. And through those sorts of engagements and and relationships, as well as by again leveraging that technology, we're able to provide a solution to carriers that puts them, again, more so into the driver's seat and, and helps them 
basically fill out their network in such a way that it decreases their operational costs and improves their their revenue per truck. Because ultimately, that's what's really important for carriers is improving the revenue per truck because that's the backbone of what will help to keep them healthy. So you guys are actually trying to track the revenue per truck and making sure that your carriers are, I guess you're always improving it that way? That's a great question. It's not necessarily as simple as tracking the revenue per truck, but I think a great proxy for that is you can pretty easily tell if if you're paying a carrier what is a, a healthy rate on a particular lane. And also in understanding things that are otherwise only considered pricing mechanisms, but really are are a way of almost a language, if you will. So what I mean by that is if you look at the accessorial charges that a carrier gives to their customers, a lot of times they'll include something like a stop-off charge. And if carriers have a really high stop-off charge, that's not them saying, hey, I'm trying to gouge you if, if you're going to give me some stop-off rate. It more likely is that they have made promises to their drivers that they don't have stop-off rate. They have low touch rate or no touch rate. And understanding that that's a language and not just a pricing mechanism is important. I say that because it ultimately, again, comes back to when we think about things like the ways that we keep our carriers healthy, paying them not just what is a a fair rate, but paying them what is necessary for them to operate well. Because if a carrier can't, if they're not, if not operating well, if they're not paid fairly, they can't invest in their network, they can't invest in their equipment, they can't invest in their drivers. And for those of us that were in the industry back when the polar vortex hit just a couple of years ago, it was pretty easy to tell that if you if you don't let carriers invest in their equipment, that's when things start to fall apart. And that's when service failures really start to peak. So we think that it's it's our responsibility to ensure carriers can operate healthily healthily, excuse me, in working with us. And that's something we we stay very true to. That's excellent. And so it's it really sounds as if AI is taking some of the tasks that automation does better away from people and keeping people in the process. But what I also like is it, it's a better experience, I think, for the carrier and also for the shipper, which is obviously something that freight brokerage didn't always, it's a difficult balancing act for everybody. So it sounds like you've got some tools that allow you to do that a little better. Absolutely. The way that we think about it ultimately, too, is just that if we're not adding value, we really don't deserve a seat at the table. So we are very, very focused on ensuring we're adding value to both our carrier customers as well as our shipper carrier customers. Eric, this was excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and tell us a little bit about LoadSmart and a little bit about AI. It's nice education. So if someone wants to reach out and connect with you or learn more about LoadSmart, how would they go about doing that? So I can be reached through email. My email address is eric, E-R-I-K, at loadsmart.com. Or my LinkedIn profile, which I believe there is a link to that that you're providing, Joe. That's also a great way to reach out to me as well. Excellent. I will put all the proper links in the podcast note. Thank you so much, Eric. This was wonderful. And thank you all of you for listening. And until next time, onward and upward. You've been listening to the Logistics of Logistics podcast, where we engage in conversation with experts in the logistics field. For more details, visit thelogisticsoflogistics.com or follow Joe Lynch on LinkedIn.